לחיים, לחיים, לחיים. לחיים, לחיים, we have to take a Christ. One of the things that uh, one of the big talk about Amuna, see Baslagani, to see it as a garden. The idea also of that the Rebbe Kachsech this idea that every year is a shliach, which means you know most people. I say most people. I say people. I'm talking about people. People would rather live mediocre lives. What's the shot? A person's walking down the street. I'm not talking when he's davening, when he's learning. A person was walking down the street. And he has a machshav. He has a thought. And it's not such a good thought. You say, Shalish keeps that mayas. But it's a clipus noiga. So that part of the thought. And then he's walking and he's thinking to himself, I fart, you know, says Nayom Yom that Lacha uh, Mei if a person walks on stones on the street and is not Chazang Mishnayas or something, then the stones are going to come to you and have tightness. What, who, who allowed you? Why are you better than me? That you stepped all over me. This was the best for me. If you say that you were doing something, you were learning or thinking about doing a toivet to another, I don't know, something positive. Okay, so then you have some schuskim that you can walk on the stones. If not, very good. Give you shows. A person's walking and he's having a say, stop, you know. So he thinks to himself, who am I bothering? Who am I bothering? I'm a good Jew. I learn, I daven, I do my satsnaka, my elochiyid. So for now, for five minutes, I'm having stamped thoughts about nothing. Who am I bothering? <coughs> but the Ramam writes that loyalim yira satsmai, saying that it's kibar kedushin, kol loyalim kul mishakal. That a person has to see that the whole world is in balance. Yeah. And also, mitzvah achas, you do one good deed, one small thing. You tip the whole balance in Torah, which means that every single machshava, Deborah, Maisa, everything that you do, you think, you speak, is big. There's no such thing as a small thing. You want to think it's small because it's easier to think that your life is small. If you think your life is very small, so that idea, who's, who am I bothering if I'm wasting my time? Am I bothering anybody? Because my life really doesn't have that much importance. I'm not such an important person that every single moment of my life has to be so filled with achrayas. And, and, uh, and I'm so uh, wasting a little bit of time. Who am I bothering? The answer is you're bothering everybody. Everybody. The whole world is waiting for you. Also, mitzvah achas, machrias atzma, ves kolam elum kolam kafskos. There's no such thing as a small thought. There's no such thing as a small word. There's no such thing as a small action. And there's a kavana, and the kavana is a chaduch film, and there's a chazaka shliach oisish lechusay. And if you're you're told to carry something, and maybe get a minyan sayom, you can't go mita molta ruba for a few days. And if you go to ruba, I'm saying you shouldn't go to ruba. That's not good. 
You want to go to the Zunta head? But you should remember, Hashem is all the God of Kanana. You think that you're going there for one reason, but the the reason you're going there is because there's a kavana pinim. You have to get there. There's something, some birurim, some person you have to meet, some person you have to inspire to bring that little close to the Yiddish guy. Bring yourself close to the Yiddish guy. Talking about a ruba, I'll tell you, my son. It's not mamish a ruba, it's Corsica. You know what Corsica is? So, it's another island. So, my son, like this, it was a, a yid called Rabbi Chalikov. He was the Rabbi's mosque. It was back in the 1970s, I think. And he calls up a young man. His name is Moshe Katlaski. Just passed away. He's just a friend. And told him that the rabbi told him he should, he should go to Corsica. He should take a flight and go to Corsica. He says, why? He said, they didn't tell me. Azoi, listen to him, told me he should go to Corsica. So he's a hostage, he gets on a plane. He lands in court, he doesn't know what to do. What is he doing? He stood there. So he tells the taxi, Is there synagogues? Is there a synagogue in, in the island? So the guy says, Yeah, there's two synagogues. There's a big one and a small one. Which one do you want to go to? He says, I don't know, the big one and the small one. Wherever you take me, I'm good. I can say. He takes us to one of the shuls there. He comes in. And uh, he sees a yid standing a shul, like, like crying. With, uh, and he walks over to this person. It's like the middle of the day, it's like two o'clock in the afternoon. He says, uh, I see something's bothering you. He said, uh, he said, who are you? Where are you coming from? He says, I'm a shliach from Obav Shreb. The Rebbe sent me to Corsica. And the guy starts crying even more. He says, what's, what's, what's going on? He said that um, I'm from the Bronx, originally. And uh, my parents were like sort of Miss R.T. Frumish. And my grandmother, before she passed away, she told me that if you're ever in a tsar, if you're ever in a hard time in your life, he should reach out to the Lubavitcher Rebbe. This is what she told me before she died. I didn't have nothing to do with the Rebbe, but she told me there's a year in Brooklyn, and if you have an issue, you should speak to him. He says like this, 30 years later, I'm living in Corsica. I married a Yiddish, a Yiddish woman. We're not from, really. And we have a boy. The boy is like 10 years old. And he's the only Jew in his school. And the last year, the goyim over there figured out that he's a Jewish boy. And they started bothering him, chapping him. And the kid comes home every day from school crying. He's a Jew. He doesn't know what, what does it mean to be a Jew. Why is he a Jew? He doesn't understand. People are, the kids are bothering him. And he doesn't want to go to school anymore. But that's the only school. So the seed says that last night, I dabbed, I don't know what to dabbed, I came to show. Or last night, two days or whatever, I came to show. And I said, I don't know who this Lubavitcher Rebbe is. But my grandmother told me that if I have a tsar, I should speak to Lubavitcher Rebbe. I don't know how to get in contact with him. I don't know who he is. So he dabbed to the Abishan in his own way. He said, Hashem, if there's such a person called Lubavitcher Rebbe, I'm in a very bad situation. I need to know what to do with my child. Take him out of school, put him in shit. Like, I don't know what to do with him. And you show him. So Moshe listens to, listens to the person. Obviously, that was the reason he was there. And um, he speaks to the boy. And he eventually, he, after being there for a short time, he actually takes the boy back to New York and puts him in shit. And the, the Yid is a, a from Yid now, this boy. Became a from Yid. The father, after the boy went to Yeshiva, and the boy was very happy, he was living in New York, 
and Moshe basically adopted this child, writes a letter to the Rebbe, said, I never met you. I don't know who you are, but thank you very much, whatever, however you did this, whatever happened. And he signed the letter, a small Jew from Corsica. What is he? He's a little yid from Corsica. The Rebbe writes him back a letter. Thank you for, for, for telling me the story or whatever. And just P.S. What you write, that you're a small Jew from Corsica, you should know there's no such thing as a small Jew. There's no such thing as a small Jew. Because of Etzim. Kasha Teufitz from Mikzasi, Atem Teufitz from Kulim. Atem Ti Eretz Chefitz. Teres of Hashem. The Nevi Yid is Eretz Chefitz. We don't, we can't, we can't uh, measure things. We can measure Yiluim. We can see in the world of Yiluim that this person learns, and this person has Dvekas, and this person has Ishpashet. But no one really knows. And Mammoth, not only no one knows, we do know. We know that the Atzis and the Shalom is connected with Atzim Salikos. So there's nothing small, there's nothing insignificant. Everything's big. Every moment is big. Someone's asked Chassam Soifer, told him that we, we both learned in Yeshiva. And we're both good heads, and you turn out to be the Chassam Soifer, and I'm Moshe Shmanderik. How did it work? What happened? How did, how did our lives go so differently? Chassam Soifer told him, that it's the in-between times. What do you do in the in-between times? I know when you dive and you dive. And when you're going to learn, you're learning. What are you doing with those five minutes in between? If you think my life is small, and I'm a small Jew from Corsica, or a small Yid from Montebello, so what does it matter? I'm a small person. So. In the big scheme of things, uh, it doesn't really matter. Who am I? Me, Ani, Amani. Me, Ani, Amani. This is the biggest clip. The biggest clip in the world is Me, Ani, Amani. Who am I? What am I? Sahakam. And the truth is, talking Me, Ani, Amani. Not the talking. That's the one hand. From the inside. From the inside, this is a whole different story. But it's it's how you live your life, how you choose to live your life. How are you going to choose? How do you choose to live in the in-between times? How do you choose to live with Achrayas? You know, the the, the when the Rebbe became Rebbe, right after, very shortly after, he wrote a letter to, Reb, to certain rabbis. And one of the letters he wrote, he wrote to the Belzer, to the Baran. The Baran was Kodesh Kodashim. And the rabbi was a young man, a new. So, and, and the rabbi writes a letter that after the war, we have to do a Fatsa Mayonis, and we have to spread Chassidus. And it was the Belzer, the Belzer showed, showed that letter to the Baran. And he was like, Who, who's this here? Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a baby. He's talking to the Baron. The Baron was the. And I said, No, that is this is, this, is, this, is, this is the way you're supposed to talk. He's doing it correct. He met him, I don't know if you know this, but in the, the, he met him, there was a Radomska Chosid. I think it was God in Germany. I'm not sure. Like before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Early, my earlier years. 
before he became Rebbe? Yeah, yeah, much before. Uh, maybe in Sadiks, the first mm-hmm. Sadiks. If Aaron was maybe in Baden Baden, I don't know, he was in a certain place. And the Rebbe was there as a younger man. The person that repeated the story was uh, Zeradomsky. He was there. He was in Baden. He told the Rebbe that Aaron was here. We should also give him Shalom. So the Rebbe told this you know, this other this other this Adamska that he he can go alatnai that he doesn't tell Rabban who he is. Don't say don't say who I am. Who's my father? My shirat. Don't say anything. Let me just give him shalom and don't say anything. So they're waiting online. Rabban used to wear a handkerchief over his hand. Didn't give shalom to people. He gave shalom through a through a napkin. The Rebbe was walking. He comes in front of him, the band takes off the handkerchief, holds his hand, says, Savarma Hunt, and Savarma Hunt, So, the guy, the, the is asking, What are you going to do? So he told him, Some Bob Shabbos Aiden. And that was it. But the was upset that he told him, but he said, Well, he asked. Why am I not going to knock him back around? Tell him it wasn't. But uh, the Nakuda I want to say is about Toshin Yud. He's writing a letter to Rabban that we have to start doing and making and, you know, put. In the first letters, the Rebbe writes, This is a letter to all the children of Israel. <laughs> who, are you, who are you? Right to your 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 cries, your constituents. The chassidi anash chabad. This is the chol bnei bnei sisol. Who gave you this? Uh, you know the answers. Take it. You do it. Everyone's uh, okay. I'm going to take care of my. I'm going to tell you a story. I'm not going to say what it is, but I'm, but there was a chassidish rabbi. He was young. And he came to Yechidus, the rabbi. It's the tape. You can hear the tape. I actually got to remember when it happened. The Sattva also probably remember the story. And that's one. And he came. And the rabbi asked him in the middle of the conversation, the rabbi asked him, listen to the chinuch from B'nai B'nai Sisal, Dar Tzisal. What's with the chinuch matzav in Dar Tzisal? So he said, Boruch Hashem, and Unza Moistus, and we have a thousand kids. And so the Rebbe said, when I said, the chinah from Leib and Eisisol, you may call Yisrael, not in your Moisit. <laughs> and the Rebbe said, you can tell better from there. Like I thought, I thought more when you say, when I asked you, how did you, how is Yidin doing? You're going to tell me that the, my cry is Boruch Hashem. I say about Jews, you're telling me about the, the, the five people that you know. Why? The stick of chrys. The stick of chrys. Chrys means that, that, that it's you. You know the English expression, the buck stops there? You familiar with it? It's you. This is, this is it. You're the guy. You're it. You're playing, a, you know, hiding and seek, and then you get it. Yeah. You look this way and that way, and it's it. No one matters. Man up. You're the you're it. Write the letter of Sisal. This guy, that guy. I'm a small person. Also in Avoida, you think about this also in Pneumistic Avoida. In your own personal Avoida, do Sadikim, Amos, Sadikim, the people, the people. Yeah. You know what? If the Amolik is thought also that way, there would never be Amolik also. They would also imagine Tamid Bal Shem will get around. Tamid Bal Shem. Tamid al You know, you're talking about Rosie Elam, the, 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 the top people in the world. They're sitting around, and they're young, they're in their 20s and 30s. And they're sitting over there, the Chayza, the Rebbe Lublin, the Bzisha, the Badicha, the Oramea, the Alter Rebbe. This is the Tamid al You understand them sitting there? And the Maggid's teaching, and they're saying, eh, who are we? That's what the real people. 
But if they didn't take a chayas and say it, then we wouldn't be sitting here. And if the guru didn't take a chayas, we wouldn't be sitting here. Yeah, take a mol. Achshad orat It doesn't mean there's nothing here. Take a chayas. It's you. Nishyanan, not someone else, not another time, not another place. As they used to say, Avram Ayo used to say, the Avram or Kasim used to say, that Amol is Amolek. Amol is Amolek. Amolek is Amol. You say Amol. Amol, Amol, Amol. That's curious. That's Amolek. That's Vegas. The non Yiddish speakers, what does that mean? Oh, it was, it was in the I'm past. I'm all, I'm all in the past. It used to be. Nostalgia. Nostalgia. <laughs> 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 you know, the mice, I'll tell you, it's not a quick story, but I have this on Shabbos. I just heard it last week, so I have this mice. It's like a lot of good mice. There was a, I told you, you remember the story. There was a Yid. It was a Chassidish Yid. A Gershalam Chassidish Yid. They used to travel to Paris. It's like Paris. It's all Zion. The kid said once he was there, and he sees that there is a person standing on like a stoop. There's their steps. And next to him, there's a bunch of people standing around, and he's like lecturing, he's speaking to them, They're very animated. So he's looking at this, it's an interesting surah, it's an interesting picture. There's a guy, there's everyone sitting around him. So he's looking at this person, this guy looks, he has what, uh, charisma, he has good, you know, deep eyes. On a couple, he doesn't know if he's Jewish, but how. When he finishes speaking, he's like, he's starting to walk away, the person walks over to them, this guy, and says, Vos to the coin in a basic forest. In Yiddish. He says, What is a coin doing in a basic forest? He says, Verbist, who are you? <laughs> How do you speak Yiddish? I don't know this. He said, Come with me, I'll show you. So he, he takes him to his apartment, he walks into his apartment, and he opens up his house, and he sees there's a room full of philosophy, books. Full of philosophy books, French philosophy, existential philosophy. Oh, I'm old big chacham. And he says, "I'm a, I'm a philosopher. I t- I'm a professor of philosophy, and I teach at the Sorbonne. Sorbonne is like the Chassid University in Paris." So, okay, that's still not answering the question. So he's come a little further. He opens up a door in the in the library. It opens up to another room, and in the room is full of sifrei chassidus, sifrei. Like a regular full library. And he sees on the desk this swarm that are open. That the, the, this person is in the middle of the sugi. It's not like he has a library. He's in the middle of learning. He says, well, Mister, who are you? He says, I'm not going to tell you who I am. And the reason why I'm not going to tell you who I am is because before the war, I'm a son of one of the big rabbis in Poland. And uh, during the war, my whole family was, was killed. My brothers, my sisters. Everyone thought that I also was killed. Everyone, my family, whoever was left, thought also that I died. But after the war, I couldn't go back. I didn't have the, the koyach to go back. I couldn't do it. So I decided I'm not telling my family I'm alive. Because if I tell my family they're going to push me, I'm going to have to become a rep. I, I didn't want to do that. And I basically left Yiddishkeit, more or less. But I love to learn. So I still learn. I would never get married, because I'm not going to marry a non-Jew. I don't have children. So I'm a bacha. There's all the bacha. And I've been teaching philosophy for right, 30, 40 years, 30 years in Sirvon. Okay. He doesn't want to say any, anything more. He doesn't want to say who he is. And every day, for a few days, he comes to him, he visits him, he talks to him, and he's a Gishmaki guy. He's a, he's a, 
has a big idea of chassidus and he has a gishmak. He's a very gishmak person to speak to, very intelligent. The guy's about to leave to go to uh, to go to New York. He's traveling to New York. So the guy tells him, "Come to my office. I have to show you, give you something." So he comes to his office. It is Yiddish office. And he gives him an envelope, a sealed envelope. And he says, I need you to deliver, hand deliver this envelope to the Lubavitcher Rebbe. But not give it to any of the Maskiris, and any of the Gaboyim, nothing. I need you to put that, this letter into the hands of the Rebbe. This is for me, Etzim Latsim. No intermediaries. I need you to give, hand deliver this letter to the Rebbe. He says, fine, come to New York, I'll do it. Comes to New York, and uh, he goes to the Maskir and the Gabayim, he says, he has to go to the Rebbe's room, he has to give the Rebbe this letter. They say, no, you have to give it to us, we'll give it to No one goes into the Rebbe's room, only the, the Gabayim. So, but the guy promised me, I said, I promise you we'll take the letter, we're not going to open it, we'll give it straight to you. Say to the Rebbe, no, no one's going to see it. He says, no, but the guy promised me I have to give it into the Rebbe's hands. He says, I don't do it. He can't do it. The kids are for a few days, he's trying to do it. See English. Those days, the Rebbe didn't come out really out of his room. So he couldn't see him at all. He went to Manhattan. He was staying in Manhattan. And a few days later, he came back. It was it was uh, Thomas Aston. He came back to Thomas Aston. The Rebbe came out from Menchah Thomas Aston. So when the Rebbe's walking out back to his out of shul, he's standing there and he sees label grown as one like a boy. He sees label grown like this. Which means don't think to jump into the line and give the Rebbe the letter. So he thinks maybe that's a, that's a good idea. I didn't think about it. Here the Rebbe's walking by, I can go straight to him. What I need the boy. I can't say he sees what label's making with his hands, he thinks maybe this is gonna be the worst thing, maybe label will slap it away, he doesn't know what to do. And then I was walking very slowly from the beginning, and slowly moving closer and closer to him. So he like yeah, he decides, you know what? It's not Kavad Maybe I don't know the protocol. So he pushes himself back like three, four people deep. And there's like a shield. I was walking slowly, and the Rebbe comes with this guy standing, stops, and turns around, is looking. So the first person moves away. The second person moves away. The third, person, and he also moves away. He thinks that was looking for something over there. And then the Rebbe like looks at him and goes like this: that uh, whatever you have in your uh, your business, give it to me. It's often Rocha Kaddish. So here, yeah, it's, it's the time he takes the letter, this thing, and he gives it to the Rebbe. That's it. A half a year later, he goes back to Paris. Comes to Paris, and uh, he knocks on the person's door. No one's answering. So he goes to Sorbonne, he goes to the university, he's very interested in what happened to this person. And he had like he had a Goyish name, he gave him his name, his name was like Jack something. So he tells, uh, he comes into Sorbonne, he goes to the ministry, he says, where's the professor? He says, oh, I'm sorry, uh, he died. He says, uh, where's he buried? He said, we have a cemetery, we're at the Sorbonne, like for the professors, we have a a Christian cemetery, and he's buried there. So where is it? He tells him location. So he goes to the cemetery, and he sees, it says in French, Point Nikma, it says his name, Chagas in Salem. He's a Yid, he's a Benon Shul He's buried over here in the cemetery. There's nothing to do. So he was away. And then he comes back to Eitz Yisrael. He goes back to Eitz Yisrael. He goes into Amshadab. Goes into Amshinam, tells Amshinam and Rambam the whole story with the letter, the cave, and he's buried there. So Amshinam tells him, Don't worry about it. The Babashin already took care of it. It's all specific. Don't worry. So half a year later, he ends up going back to Paris. And he goes back to the base, the, 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 the cemetery. It's like it's an empty grave. There's no, there's no much saying, there's no grave, nothing. So he goes to the to the people in running the cemetery, he comes to them and says, what happened? Who, who, what happened? He says, I don't know, like uh, a few days after you came, there was a few rabbis showed up, like black hats, these rabbis showed up. 
And they said, we have money and we're, we're ready to buy and take the body. He's a Jewish body. They took him out and they brought him to Purus's soul. So he's now he's buried. No, no, it doesn't say his name. It just says his English name, but he has he was Nikon Purus's soul. This is a mice. That's the end of the story. That's the end of the story. Thank you. What? the second time. Oh, what? Can I The envelope is a chayis. This is what it is. The envelope is a chayis. You take a chayis. You, you have, you have, you take, you take a chayis. If you live with Avis Yisrael, We just learned this in Shabbos, in Kisvari, in Priyat Chaim, Shara Shabbos. That he writes that you can have him for another person that can help him. Let's say another person is not doing the thing with Kavana. In your Kavana, if you have the Kavana, you do. When you're Kavana to be the Avon with another person, your machshava can help another person. Machshava me'elas. A lot is the other way around also. That when you're dovuk, in oil ma'achtas is only one. It's a miksha achas. Yeah. The neur has seven branches. But the seven branches, al writes, look up there, we learn. The seven branches is each one is malayis chasaneir. Every person has their neir. One is the of Chesed, and one is the of Gvur. Everyone has their own light. But in essence, in Atzmi, it's a Miksha Achas. Klaali is a Miksha Achas. We're one Metzias. One Metzias is a lot of different Pratim. When you connect the Miksha Achas to the Atzmi's, then it's, uh, does your right hand feel your left hand? Because in your Shalmi, it says, how could, it be, how, could it be, how could a person say, Sikam, Sita, a person had taken a comma? Yishalmi so says the marshal madavadoyma. It's like the right hand slapping the left hand for something the left hand did. The left hand, you put your hand in a, in a, in a fire, and the, your right hand, and the left hand gives a slap to the right hand. Why do you put your hand in the fire? This yid is your left hand. This yid is your right hand. This is your right finger. This is your left finger. It's a mixture achas. When the right hand goes into the fire, the left hand feels it. And if you don't feel it, it's because you're not miksha achas. <clears throat> so you think that person is talking separate from you, you must have with them. But it's chativa achas. It's dachrayas. Dachrayas is achtus. Achtus means achtus benefesh adam. Means that every single thing you do in this world, every single machshava, everything, there's nothing superfluous, nothing extra. There's nothing that's not part of the miksha achas. It's not just l'shem shemaim. It's chomash, it's chomash, Every single thing you do is the ayo, is another opportunity to act on us. Everything. Taking out the garbage, cleaning the dishes, whatever you're doing. This is the mice itself, is the ratzl Hashem, and it's the ratzl Hashem you have to, you have to connect. This is on a, on a nefeshtika level, and then it's Ba'ad Machavir. It's obviously so, the Atzmis, the Atzmis of the Yid. And you have the Atzmis of the Yid, you look at another Yid. You don't have to look at the... I forgot who it was, I think. It was one of those, I think the Kodesh Magid. That uh, Besay Fiyomi was lying on his bed, and he's, he turned to his son, and he told his son, that yet's been a chashtik ruchni. That now I already transcended. I'm a mamash ruchnistic person. So his son touched him. He said, Tatech, feel gashmi. That I feel, I feel physical. He says, Yeah, because you're physical, you feel physical. If you're spiritual, you feel spiritual. If you're a physical being, you're going to feel physicality. <laughs> so you can look at the world and say, or you can say this is the glasses you can look from the oven from Choshech 
and darkness. It makes sense that this is what's going on. Who, what do you know what's going on? Let's face it. Let's up, I guess, in here. We have a Muna. No? We have a Muna. We don't have Seichel. Seichel is okay. Seichel is nice. It's entertainment. It's a nice tool. But we have Dvekas. We have, we have a Muna. We have Hechekite. We see the world as we see goodness. We see the boss of the God and the Gnuni. This is what we see. Every single moment, every single person, every single connection. means to live To live, to live. Chaim, Chaim, Chaim.